Welcome to Pacvalham. Like, what is a Pacvalham? It's pronounced Pacvalham, Bethany, and it is my YouTube channel. Also, you don't come in until later. Okay! Anyway, this video has 10 parodies of YouTube series, and the puzzle is to identify them. I will make a solution video and put a link to it in the description. Once upon a time, there was a deep, dark cave. In the cave, a single stalactite drips a mystical green substance known as Pacvalhemia molinia wallarbin. One drop every 42 years, 3 months, 5 days, 8 hours, 32 minutes, and 2.93 seconds. One day, when the ground received its 84th drop, it split open, triggering a chain of physical and chemical reactions, and therefore was created The Mystical Show with Bryce and Ryan. Today, there will be a fun science lesson, which is a bit of an oxymoron, amazing sights that you might or might not have seen before, food, a visit from special guests, a knowledgeable game, an interactive audio clip, a coffee mug to determine what we should do, clever instructions, which should be obvious that they didn't come from an IKEA assembly manual, and all of that jazz. So, you are sitting in science class while the teacher is articulating his lecture about genetics and heredity and Punnett squares and Gregor Mendel. You know that you are unable to just sit there and do nothing for the entire duration of the class, so you decide to sketch on your paper. First, you sketch a weird creature from outer space. He has a big head and a thin body, his eyes are shaped like squares, and he has six limbs that can stretch three feet. Next, you draw another creature from outer space. This time, it is a girl, and she also has a big head, but a round body, her eyes are shaped like stars, and she has only four limbs that can't stretch very far at all. They fall in love with each other and get married, but what would their children look like? You decide to pick letters to represent all of their traits, like S for square-shaped eyes and S for... Well, that won't work. Since you decide to make square-shaped eyes dominant over star-shaped eyes, then square-shaped eyes should get a capital S, and star-shaped eyes get a lowercase s. Now it is time for the bodies. You pick a capital R for round bodies, which are dominant over thin bodies. You could pick a capital T for thin bodies, or since it isn't dominant, a lowercase t, but that is a different letter than R, and it would be too confusing to remember which letters go with which other letters. You have a capital S and a lowercase s for the shapes of the eyes, and they are the same letter, so it would make sense and be less confusing to have a lowercase r for the thin bodies so that you know what goes with the capital R for round bodies. What letter should be used for the size of the head, or the number of limbs, or the stretchiness of the limbs? Six limbs are dominant over four limbs, but you already used S for the shape of the eyes. How about N for numbers? Capital N for six limbs, and lowercase n for four limbs. Not stretching far is dominant over stretching far. Capital C for close, and lowercase c for far. Both parents have big heads, which is dominant over small heads, and you decide that they all only have capital B's and no lowercase b's, so all of their children will have big heads. How would you find all possible combinations of traits that the children can have? Tables. The father has both capital S's, but the mother has both lowercase s's. I'll write the father on the left side and the mother at the top. The father has two lowercase r's, but the mother has one of each, and the dominant trait takes over. The father has one of each, but the mother has two lowercase n's. The father has two lowercase c's, but the mother has two capital c's. There. Done. You look up at the board and see the same thing that you just drew. A guy by the name of Reginald Punnett invented it before you, and he called it the Punnett Square. If science class is boring for you, let's move on to something more exciting. Like computers. Or more specifically, websites. Because I have Quissy. Cool websites I show you. First of all, do you even have internet? Is it working or is it broken? To find out, just go to istheinternetbroken.com and if it isn't broken, it will tell you. Do you have any more questions? Wikipedia has all of the information. This website is guaranteed to be accurate because if there is any misinformation, Anybody can click the edit button and correct it. Do you want to find more things? Use Google. You just simply type what you want to find and then Google will give it to you. 
If just videos are what you're looking for, YouTube is for you. Are you lonely? Facebook can help you make friends. If you find someone who you would like to be friends with, send them a friend request because they might be looking for friends too. If they are in danger and have a ticking time bomb in front of them, If they are in danger and have a ticking time bomb in front of them, read the bomb manual to them so they know what to do. More interactive stuff can be found on Scratch, and if you create an account, you can make your own interactive stuff, or non-interactive stuff, or other stuff, or whatever stuff. More complex interactive things can be found on Chrome Experiments. I know it says Chrome, but it also works for the others. For some examples, copper, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. If you can't choose which thing to pick or which website to visit, or anything at all, use Wheel Decide. It has a lot of pre-made wheels, but you can create your own wheel. Here is a wheel to pick a genre of music. Classical. I noticed that it doesn't include annoyingly catchy repetitive songs on here. Would you like an annoyingly catchy repetitive song? Oh, 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 I, 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 I do! What about remixing a song? How about something with only beatboxing and singing and other mouth noises? That would be incredible beatbox. Incredibox is a cool website for remixing acapella tracks. Just drag an icon to this guy to dress him and make him produce music. Do you want a large variety of music? Kevin McLeod has a large variety of music on Incompetech. From jazz, to dance, to epic soundtracks, to sad somber pianos, to um, whatever this is. You may use these songs because Kevin uses Creative Commons a license organization that anybody can use on their creative works to allow other people to use them. Pac Valham Act is acapella like Incredibox, but is more like Incompetech. These acapella tunes are licensed with the Creative Commons license. Now for my favorite website. There are no ads, no negativity, no inappropriate content anywhere. It can help you relieve stress and it even works without an internet or Wi-Fi connection. This website is about colon blank. This has been 15 websites on Quizzy. Cool websites I show you. I am feeling hungry right now. This is Ernie's meal time, and I am Ernie Swim 9. Today I'll be eating some steak, uh, baked potato, a small salad, a slice of cantaloupe, and I have some tea to drink. Okay.
if the left can that be or not. Okay, Bethany, you come in now. Thank you. So tell me, like, what was a pack out pack? Pack Val Ham. It is my YouTube channel, and it stands for puzzles and cool videos and life facts and more. Oh yeah, I know about that. Are we allowed to be able to be in a video for Pack Val Ham? Yes, and you are in one right now. Cool. Bryce, you told me we were going to play a game or something, right? Yes, right. This game... I totally like games! How do we play? What is it? What do we, like, have to do? It is called Bibliography Necessary. I have a random article, which you all will not be able to see, from Wikipedia, which was mentioned in Quisty earlier. And any time a player correctly answers a question or says a fact about the topic, he or she will get one point and a chime will sound. What all do you know about, uh, Roomba? Oh, is that like a vacuum cleaner? I think I saw those things at the ball last week. Yes, you get one point. Yas! My family members are yas. Yo, I know something about Roombas. They are small and circular and move on their own. Bryce, tell me I'm right. Yes, in fact, you actually are right. I'll give you one point. If I'm correct, I believe they were powered by a nickel hydrate battery or something like that. It mentioned it in a tech article that I read recently. I will give it to you, Jimmy. You are close enough. It is nickel metal hydrate or NIMH battery. I have seen videos of cute kittens and cats riding them, and they are totally so adorable. Okay, does anybody know the name of the company that created Roomba? Sorry, dog, I don't have that swag. I think Hoover created them, right? Sorry, that is not right. It is iRobot. Oh, yeah. The article also mentioned Hoover vacuums. I forgot about iRobot. That's okay. This Wikipedia article says, Later models introduced several additional operating modes. What are they? I'm just gonna say a real low mode for a little bit of dirt. A middle mode for a little mo, and a high mode for all the dirt. Nope. How about max for the extra tough dirt? One point, there is a max mode. This mode keeps the Roomba cleaning normally until the battery runs out. There is a spot mode for cleaning a small area. Does it move in spirals? Yes, you nailed it. Is there, like, a clean mode to clean the floor? Yes, it just cleans the entire room normally once. There is one more mode that this article mentions. Oh, I forget the name of it, but it makes the Roomba go back to the charging station, right? I will give you one point. It is called Dock. So far, Beduster and Bethany have two points, and Jimmy has three. Let's go with the first person to have five points wins the game. Easy. Um... I'll ask about what the Roomba does if it comes close to a wall. It backs up and turns around if it hits the wall. Right. If it gets trapped in a small area, it flashes lights or speaks to you that needs to be moved manually. That's right, Jimmy. May I get another point? If you can tell me something else about Roombas. Could you ask me a question? Sure. Do you know anything about iRobot Create? I believe you can use it to, like, do other things and clean the room. You can put a camera on it, and it'll be like you are riding the Roomba just like the cute kittens and cats. You earn one point. One or two generations have a remote control for them. 
You win. I have five points already? Yes. You got the battery close enough. Nailed spot mode. Set the description of dock mode. What happens if it goes in a too small area? And remote control. The second generation and third generation have infrared remote control. Do I get a bribe or something? How about you make an audio clip with different instructions on it and multiple people will do those instructions at the same time? Excellent! Sounds like fun! That is so disgusting. So it's been about a year since uh, I've made this, come up with the idea and made most of these recordings and as of now, I still don't know and haven't recorded yet how I'm going to do the, the, I think it's the next series. Uh, and, but, uh, but last year, we just haven't, uh, had to, um, just weren't able to do it. Uh, and, and also... I didn't know and still don't know how I was going to record it anyway. And also, I, I've already embarrassed myself in the video and I don't need to embarrass my father, mother, and brother. But you can still listen to this. This is the WAV test. Howdy! My name's Jimmy, and you're on Earth to go through a test. First, pick another person. Play rock, paper, scissors until there's a winner. Best two out of three. I'm playing with my ref by, uh, like myself in the video. But we just keep picking this. If you won, raise your hand. Now, play with the other winner while the non winners play together. If you won twice with that person, raise your hand. There is now one person who you haven't played with. Play rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spark with the remaining person. If you don't know what that is, watch Bryce. This is lizard. Lizard beats spark and paper. This is spark. Spark beats scissors and rock. Source, rpsls.net. Play best three out of five. Again, winners, raise your hand. Who doesn't like bubbles? Go to the back deck. You used to have a long red bubble wand. I don't know where it is now. I tried to find it to show you, but I couldn't find it. While Bryce blows bubbles, pop as many as you can. You're it! Well, Bryce is, but wait until I say go! 
play a game of tag in the backyard, at any time the air horn sounds, whoever it is currently chasing now becomes the new it. Ready, set, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, go! You all must be tired right now. Go ahead and take a nap on the grass. Whoops! Sorry about that. Did you have a good nap? Go back to the front porch. It is almost time for me to leave, but first, pick a random integer from 1 to 10. Hint, you have an integer number of fingers, unless part of one is cut off. Take your integer and multiply it by 9 to get a product. Take each digit of the product and add them together to get a sum, e.g. 85 becomes 8 plus 5 and the sum is 13. Find the square of the sum by multiplying it by itself. Take the square and subtract the meaning of everything, i.e. 42, to find the difference. Divide the difference in half, subtract one and a half, then divide in half once more, each operation being applied to, to the result of the previous operation. That is all of the math. Hold up that number of fingers. Hey, Bryce! You are the best at math in this group, why are you holding only three fingers? That is really an example of a Parker Square! Bryce can explain the reference later. Try squaring it regularly. There, now you match, and it is time for me to leave. The other three of you passed the test while Bryce, who typed this script for me to read, failed. Goodbye! Okay. Welcome to Daring Dimitas! In this Dimitas are slips of paper with challenges written on them. The winner of whatever challenge we'll do will be considered the Daring Defeater, and the loser will have to do a punishment. Today I'll be playing with my brother and my father. Hello! I will flip a coin to the Determine who will draw a challenge from the Demitas. My brother will be heads, and my father will be tails. He always gets a tail well, end of the situation. It's tails! That means you pick it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pictionary! Yay! Hey! Hallelujah! Okay. I have paper and pen here. I have a word generator here, so we just click new word to generate a word for the drawer to draw and guess or to guess. So, which one of you wants to be the drawer first? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're the drawer. Mm -hmm. Are you? Yeah, because he's. And yet, no. the other person would be the guesser. Mm -hmm. My dad will guess. Okay, Ryan, you draw first. Okay, so... 
Here's how it works. I just press that. You, yep. And draw it. Okay. And my father will have 30 seconds to guess. Oh, this word is weird. <clears throat> what? Ryan. I can't draw it. Oh, that's what the word is. I thought it was a different word. Okay. How do I draw that? Um, well, just try your best. If my father guesses correctly, I get a negative point. Okay. Okay, ready, set, go. Tombstone. Graveyard. Alive. Yeah! yeah. That, okay. So that means... <laughs> oh, I get a negative point. Okay, now, um, how, how about let's uh, do you two switch. You draw, and he guesses. Oh, yeah, look, there's time's up. I've got to stop, I've got to stop the timer. Okay, what do you get? Okay. Ready, set, go. I've seen this before. A bed. A bed. Sleeping. Sleep. Oh, shoot. I've seen one of those before. Soapbox derby car. Is it a car? It's a Time's bed. up! What was it? Blanket. Oh. <laughs> blanket, you've tapped you the blanket. I'm where? Tapping the blanket. Well, I don't know what you tap. You should have drew, drawn an arrow to it. That means I don't get another negative point. Okay. Why do you get negative points? Well, if you two guess correctly, that means you two did well, and I get a negative point. Oh yeah. Cause... So you you went to draw well, so they'll guess it, and and they went to guess correctly. Makes sense to me. Okay. All right. So, who's going to be the camera person? Okay. So it'll be me again. Or, I mean, me with my. Oh. I'll draw first. Okay. Ready. Set. Go. Fire. Torch. Leaf. Yay! That means Ryan gets a negative point. Okay, and now you draw for me. So you have to put the camera over here? Yeah. Yep. Put the camera over here, Ryan. Over here? Ryan, new word. Okay, what is it? Wait, don't tell me what it is. Okay, got it. Ready, set, go. Stick figure, man. Shirt. Jacket. Coat. Yeah, you got it. Okay, that means Ryan gets another negative point. <laughs> Why is spamming negative points for me? Okay. We're that good. Okay. All right, next. Okay, somebody take it. Wait. Okay, you're the camera person next. Okay. Okay. Up, oh, there's time up. Okay. When does the time start? Go! Wait. Three, two, one. Um. Pac Man, Ghost, Dinosaur, um. Dragon, Monster. You got it. Okay, so that's a negative point for Kevin. For my father. Uh, next, I'll draw. Ready, set, go. Here's the rule you're not allowed to use other pictures. Right, you're wasting time.
You know those where to use other drawings? Right. TV? I, I could. TV? What the heck? Is that a bed? Yep. Yeah. Sleeping. Sleep. Is it a bed? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. So did I Time's get it? up. Did I get it? It's bunk bed. Oh, was that close enough? No. So the front leave right has the most negative points. He will have to do the punishment. Yay! Woo! And me and my father are tied. Did they eat the paper? Because I'll be that. No. Me and my father are tied. Well, I guess we could both be considered the, the daring defeater. Just tell me what. Okay, up. let's see. This punishment comes from Mr. Derekster 81. Eat a spoonful of mayo, mustard, and ketchup mix. Yay! That sounds good! Hey, Ryan, Ryan, you don't have to use that big of a spoon! You could have used a smaller spoon. You don't have to fill that one up. Well, that's okay. You probably should have scooped the mayonnaise first. Here, I have no idea. Okay. Okay. I don't want to get too much mayo. Because mayo is not really good for you. Too Thank much. you, Mr. Dexter81. Whoever that is. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did he get ketchup in that? Not bad. Okay. Would you like to do a challenge? Today I will show you 10 challenges to win you money. For the first challenge, you need a permanent pen and a piece of paper. Draw a line on the paper and challenge your friend to make the line shorter without covering the line or folding or ripping the paper. To win the challenge, draw a second line that is longer than the first line would be shorter. For the second challenge, you need 17 coins or some other small object. Secretly hide one in your pocket before going to your friend and explaining the game. Each person in turn takes one, two, or three objects and puts it in their pocket. The winner is the person who takes the last object. Your friend goes first, and to win, you take one object after your friend takes three, two after your friend takes two, and three after your friend takes one. If your friend figures out the secret or you tell them, get all of the objects from the pocket. There is one extra object, but your friend doesn't know that. You go first and remove the extra object so the game is just like before. For the third challenge, you need 14 sticks arranged in this clover shape. Challenge your friend to remove three sticks and make only three squares. Winning this challenge is easier than they might think. For the fourth challenge, tell your friend to think of any whole number from 1 to 10 and not tell you the number. Tell your friend that you will write the number they are thinking of on a piece of paper. Write all whole numbers from 1 to 10, then tell them you wrote their number.
For the fifth challenge, you can use a piece of paper or the money. Tell your friend that they can't fold the paper or bill in half ten times without unfolding it. It can't be done, so you get your friend's money. We are halfway through the challenges, so here is a funny poster. For the sixth challenge, make sure you are wearing shoes. Set up three chairs in a row. Ask your friend if it is possible for you to jump over the chairs. Is it possible for me to jump over those chairs? After they say no, tell your friend that you will take your shoes off and jump over them. Well, I'm going to take my shoes off and jump over them. Take your shoes off and jump over them. The three chairs in the question were just misdirection. I took my shoes off and jumped over them. For the seventh challenge, you need paper and a writing utensil. Challenge your friend to draw a more perfect freehand circle, and only one circle. After they try, put your hand and pencil in a position like this. And while keeping them as still as possible, rotate the paper with your other hand. For the eighth challenge, tell your friend that you can throw an object and get it past some long distance. To win the challenge, throw the object, then pick it up and walk it past that long distance. You didn't say that you would get the object that distance by throwing it. For the ninth challenge, you need an unopened can of soda. Tell your friend that you can drink from the can without opening it. Notice how the bottom is concave. Fill it with water, then drink. For the 10th challenge, you need some bean boozled jelly beans. If you don't know, some of the innocent looking beans have a nasty flavor, like a brown bean could taste like dog food instead of chocolate pudding, or a white and yellow bean could taste like rotten eggs instead of popcorn. Get a handful and challenge them to eat all of the jelly beans at the same time in less than 30 seconds. If you have a container of regular jelly beans, use that to sell the idea that the beans have nothing wrong with them. Knuckle time again. It is dark, which means it is almost the end of the video. So for the game, and now the worst. Hey, could you uh, keep it down? Trying to record. Oh, sorry but, about that. Let's get up here. I just got interrupted by my smart side. Okay, for the grand finale. I have BB&T, not the bank. In this case, BB&T stands for Big Band and Tunes. I haven't come up with the name of, uh, for it yet. I haven't even composed it yet. But um, when I do compose it, then uh, you'll see it. And then the title at the top, right about now. Just kidding. Actually, now.
that? It's lighter out now. If you are smart, click the like button. If you are a genius, click the subscribe button. And you will see me next time. Do not play with lighters or matches. I was responsible only lighting it in the air. But lighters are not toys. Neither are matches. I just saved my breath with sizzling cinnamon out of here. Oh, I could still taste a little bit of the bean boozled. I really did eat a handful of bean boozled and not a handful of these. I honestly did. I could have shown you, shown me taking handful of the bean boozled. But then again, maybe I'd took in all of them out, put a few of these in and whatever. I did not do that. Honestly, I gave myself... Oh, I could taste some of the toothpaste. That was one of the flavors. I honestly did put bean boozled beans in my Mouth handful, not any of these.